Chapter 51 The Cottage She let Danny sleep in. They finished mocking duty. She helped Aggie with breakfast and saw the postman stop at the gate. When she went to collect the mail, there was a letter from India. She opened it over her first cup of tea for the day. She let Danny wake up in his own time and she might as well read in the meantime. It wasn't just a letter from her mother. There was a document in the back. She read it first, blinked, hurriedly went back to the letter. It was a short one. My dearest Eleanor, I'll write you a proper letter later in the week when I have more time, but I felt this had to be done since a part of the news is bound to be a great disappointment. Your father's replacement has had a great and tragic loss in the family and has been relieved from military service on grounds of his own health. Your father has offered to stay on another year in India. My sweet girl, we will not be coming to England in December. We will not be there for your wedding, and I know your Danny has so considerately tried to arrange it so we can be there. My dear, this then is part of our wedding gift to you. Since you only turned 21 in May, this is our signed permission if you wish to marry your pilot before then. You have always been a wise child, and your father and I have read of this love of yours with joy. You have our blessing. Get married when you wish. Send us photographs. We will be there in spirit. All our love, Mama and Papa. She was still silently sitting like that when Aggie came back in with cheese for the larder. And now, Eleanor? She silently handed the letter to Aggie. She read, read again. The old woman gently put her hand on Eleanor's shoulder. Do it, my girl. You've waited long enough. I can have your dress finished in a week. She nodded, but there were no words in her yet. She made Danny tea, went to wake him up. She wouldn't tell him just yet, but she did want to see him alone. It was around ten when they got to the cottage. The paint was peeling and there were repairs needed. But there was a neat yard around it and the paddocks were in operational shape. There was running water and a small shed. What do you think, Al? You have been very quiet. She sat down on the porch steps. I'm going to make you look at another letter. This one has knocked me flat a bit. He took it from her, read it with his back against a porch pillar. She couldn't read his expression. He looked at the permission documentation, the letter again, then finally at her. He was very calm. There was no outward sign of what he was thinking. The heart was beating in her throat. He studied her face for a long time. Still no smile. His eyes very serious. She looked away. Elle, look at me. Please get up. She did, and then there was the slightest hint of a smile. He stepped forward, took her hands. This time, I'm asking the way I wanted to. Eleanor, will you marry me? Always. Will two weeks be enough time? Her head snapped up. Really? Really. I'm sick of waiting. I don't quite know how we'll make it work, and I might not even be able to live with you the whole time. I really don't quite know. But I don't want to wait anymore. Not after yesterday. I don't want to be apart anymore. She jumped up kissed him wildly, and he had his fingers in her hair and everything that he felt for her in his eyes. It was a long time before anyone spoke again. Where shall we plant the roses? Against the fence, or right here, next to the porch?